Ford Fort to answer the call. From now on, one thing mattered and one thing only. Victory. Total war meant total mobilization. Not war just for soldiers. War for everyone. Young or old, male or female, made no difference. Age had nothing to do with it. If you were only 12 years old, it was work for 12-year-olds to do. Sex had nothing to do with it. If you could hold a rifle, you were a soldier. If you could turn a lathe, you were a soldier. If you could harvest the fields, you were a soldier. If you could handle a locomotive or pilot a ship or guide a tractor, you were still a soldier. For everything you did was part of that total war. Nothing that the enemy could use was left behind. Not a yard of wire or a pound of iron. Not an acre of wheat or a head of cattle. And the old men stood watch over the fields, ready to give the word to burn at the first sight of the enemy. Scorched earth. What can't be withdrawn must be destroyed. That meant the factory, the plants, the oil depots, Flames claimed them all. The giant dam at Nipastroy, into which had been poured not only steel and concrete, but five long years of Russian toil and Russian sweat to yield the miracle of electricity to the farms and people of the Ukraine. Now, rather than let the power it generated fall to the enemy, they destroyed it. Scorched earth the land they had lived on and worked on, their forests, their fields, their farms. They surrendered them to the flames, but not to the invaders. That was the scorched earth. And for action behind the German lines, a new army was formed, an army without uniforms, whose home was the forest, and whose front was the enemy's rear a guerrilla army, a minimum of glory and a maximum of determination. Their achievements were seldom recorded. Look well at these faces. You will never see them again in the ranks of war prisoners or read their names over heroes' graves. Ahead of them lay nothing but the rope and the halt, but they stayed behind and went on fighting. Their only goal was merciless destruction destruction of communication lines, supply, the invaders themselves. Their weapons were dynamite and the terror of surprise. They asked for no mercy and they gave none. This is the guerrilla army. This, the scorched earth. This, the Red Army. These, its leaders. These are the reasons why, although the Germans conquered land, 500,000 square miles of it, it was just land, barren land, scorched land. These are the reasons why, after five and a half months of blitz warfare, after coming within sight of their goal, the Germans were stopped at the very gates of Moscow. These are the reasons why, although Hitler had sworn that before December the swastika would fly from the Kremlin towers, December had come, but it wasn't the swastika that flew over the Russian capital. And it wasn't the Nazi conquerors who marched through the streets of the ancient city, but fresh reserves of the Red Army, 